the 21st century, those who change the world are those who change the culture. They get people in sync, lead tribes, create movements, and generate an energy field where ordinary people achieve extraordinary results. When you are with people, and I really mean it in an authentic place, when you have created a safe place for people to belong and to bring their whole selves to work, when you have created a culture that experiences diversity and inclusivity of all levels, race, ethnicity, sexuality, seen and unseen handicaps, when you have built a microcosm out of the macrocosm of this world, anything is possible. I truly believe that. This episode is brought to you by Time Etc., an award-winning virtual assistant company for entrepreneurs. If you are a freelancer or an entrepreneur like me, and you feel like you could do with some extra help from a virtual assistant, Time Etc. has a very generous offer. It's exclusive for the listeners of Culture Lab, and you can try an assistant for two hours completely free of charge. To take advantage of this opportunity, go to www.timeetc.com slash culture lab. That's www.timeetc.com slash culture lab. Or you can just click on the link in the show notes. I'm Aga Bayer, and this is the Culture Lab podcast where you will find ideas and inspiration on how to harness the power of team and organizational culture. I talk to leadership thinkers, culture experts, entrepreneurs, and all sorts of movers and shakers. And together we explore the fascinating topic of culture, leadership, and personal growth. If you like what you hear, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Or better yet, write a review on iTunes and share the podcast with your followers and friends on social media. For more, check out our archive at www.agabayer.com slash podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 34. I'm sure that you've heard of Gary Vaynerchuk. He's an entrepreneur, an author and an internet personality. And as it often happens with internet personalities, some people love him, some people not so much, but I think no one can dispute the fact that he seems to have a knack for growing businesses really, really fast. And our today's guest is Claude Silva, and she's the chief heart officer at Vina Media, a digital agency that was founded by Gary Vee. When I first heard of Claude's title, I have to say I was a little bit intrigued and I wanted to know, is that title just a PR gimmick or is it really different from a traditional CHRO role? And I was also curious to hear Claude's perspective on Viner Media's culture and the role it plays in the company's rapid growth. Have a listen and see what you think. Claude. Welcome to Culture Lab. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be here. I'm really thrilled to have you with us and really, really excited to dive straight into our conversation. So the first question that I have for you is a question that I ask all our guests, and it's about the early cultural influences that shaped you as a person. So what made Claude Claude, in other words? Mm -hmm. I love this question. I've never received it before. The things that shaped me from a cultural pr perspective, which is also from a heart perspective, were things such as my grandmother, my nana. Uh, she had an incredible way with people. She had a heart that was really here to serve and to joyfully serve. And I saw that from a very early, early time in my life that Uh, I really saw empathy in action, not knowing it was empathy, just seeing someone with a very open heart wanting to make people's day brighter. The other thing is sports, being on athletic teams from a very, very early age and being involved with 
teams and having to share and participate and collaborate and throw the ball here or throw the ball there or be on tennis teams. So that I, I believe that between the the big heart coupled with team and team building is what really shaped me today. Mm. So the heart is already visible there and collaboration as well. But before we go there, just for the people who are not familiar with Viner Media, would you be able to say a few words about what your company does? So Viner Media is a global digital creative agency. We are built for the now meaning we are very, very culturally relevant where our consumer's attention is today and is going tomorrow. And we work with Fortune 50, Fortune 10 companies, everyone such as Diageo or uh, Budweiser or very large banks or Mountain Dew and Pepsi. And everything we do is really the uh, end product is video on your phone. It's Media agency, um, as, as probably many other media agencies, but knowing of Gary, not knowing him personally, I imagine that it's not your usual media agency. So I'm really curious if you can, you know, tell us in a few words, what makes you different? What makes you unique in that industry? Yes, we have an incredible CEO, Gary Vaynerchuk, who is nothing short of brilliant. And he's just a fantastic mentor to everyone that works here. And then you couple that with his brand, which is Gary V. And that really, you know, you put the brand Gary V and the man Gary Vaynerchuk together, and we have inspiration 24 7. I also I believe that this is something that our, our clients are very much enthralled with and inspired with as well. Gary has his finger on the pulse of where marketing and advertising is going. He is able to see what's going on in the future by looking at today. And so you put those two things together. And I do believe it gives us the advantage of being in the right place at the right time, not working on campaigns that are focused where we were 2015, 2012, but really looking at 2020. And that, like I said, inspires all that touch the work that we do and inspires our employees internally. And I know that he also has quite a unique approach to business making. And even the fact that, you know, your title is Chief Heart Officer, it already, I think, speaks volumes about the company's philosophy. So my question is, how is this role different from a traditional CHRO role? So I don't come from HR, as, uh, as I'm sure a lot of your listeners know at this point. I come from strategy. I have worked with humans and human behavior for a very, very long time. I trained as a psychotherapist a zillion years ago. And you put all of these things together, coupled with the fact that I'm new to the world of HR, and already I have a very different outlook on what I believe the HR function needs to provide employees today. So that being said, what was obvious to me from years and years and years of working in agencies is that I thought and I felt that culture, corporate culture, had lost a lot of its humanity, had lost a lot of its love, had lost a lot of the fact that we're working with people, not titles, not salaries, not even employees, but unique individuals. And so what we do here with this role, Chief Heart Officer, is my one remit is to meet every single employee over and over and over again and infuse the agency with empathy. So this role is extremely high touch. That is the difference. I have a team that runs HR, that does proper HR, but we do it differently here. We are extremely personal. Now you are above 800 people. Mm -hmm. So actually being really connected to each and every one of them, it, it's probably quite a challenge, isn't it? it? You know, challenge is a funny one. I don't think of it as a challenge so much because I love it. 
it comes naturally to me to be with individuals and to be listening and to help connect them and to help them identify roadblocks and remove them. The only the challenge is time and is, is finding enough time to meet with everyone throughout a year. I think that's probably the biggest challenge. And, you know, many of us are time poor at this point. So how do we hack my schedule and hack other people's schedules so that I'm able to also do uh, people operations here? I'm able to lead an HR team while really meeting and holding space for each and every employee here. Hmm. So have you already figured out ways to clone yourself or scale <laughs> yourself? To... <laughs> well, we, you know, we have in a way we, uh, be, VaynerMedia is, is, will be 10 years old in March. So we're a very new company. However, we have a lot of longevity here. We have people who have been here since our infancy, or they've been here for seven years or five years like myself. And when you're here for that long, You understand our DNA. You understand what's in our water. And thus, you're able to carry the culture as well. So I believe the way I call it is, you know, we've created culture champions here who have definitely cloned parts of me, cloned parts of Gary, cloned, cloned the, the well, what's in our well here, which is really, you know, an extraordinary culture. Yes, we have Uh, you know, we have rainy days and we have cloudy days, but at, uh, at mass, we have a, a really collaborative, friendly, energetic culture. So before we talk a little bit more about your culture, because I'm really, really interested to dive a little bit deeper into um, your culture and what it's like, I want to reconnect to that piece about empathy and about you connecting with each and everyone um, in, in the company. Um, so when you do this, I'm just curious, what is the impact that it has on people that, that you've observed? Could you share that with our listeners? Yeah. What happens when people get really seen mm -hmm. and when they feel real empathy and real connection and real interest in them. Right. Well, what you're talking about is synergy. So what happens when there is a synergy among 800 people? What happens when people have been trained and taught how to be in a we, not an I culture? What happens is anything is possible. We have such a we have so much uh, of an entrepreneurial spirit here that also comes from Gary, and so there's a very large runway here for people to do their job in their unique way. There is a a connection here that comes alive that you can see among people, among teams, even among. People that are getting coffee in the kitchen, there is an electricity here. And I really believe that this is, this leads us to what I would call a collaborative mindset, meaning we all have the ability to create ideas, to execute in, on ideas. We all have the uh, ability to be leaders here. When you When you are with people, and I really mean it in an authentic place, when you have created a safe place for people to belong and to bring their whole selves to work, when you have created a culture that experiences diversity and inclusivity of all levels, race, ethnicity, sexuality, seen and unseen handicaps, When you have built a microcosm out of the macrocosm of this world, anything is possible. I truly believe that. So the high touch, when I start to care about someone, they care about me. When that person cares about their coworker, they care about each other. You know, and that is something that takes time. It is not, you know, culture is, is a cultivation. You just don't plug it in. It is a, a constant churning of the soil here that we are 
I love that. I, I, I'd like to underscore that, that it is a cultivation. It's, you just don't just plug it in. It's, it's so powerful. I love how you phrase that. Um, and it sounds like it takes a lot of consistency and a lot of effort yeah. to, to cultivate that culture. Um, and I remember from one of your interviews um, that I saw, you mentioned that originally Gary actually hired you to help you scale the culture because you were in a period of really rapid growth. And I'm wondering how is that going? So scaling that culture and also do you have any key learnings from that process? Because I know that's a challenging process on many levels. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? So you are correct. Originally, when we put this role into place, it was to scale Gary. Gary is a very operational CEO, not a micromanager, but he's aware of what goes on in this company. He's very much uh, involved in big picture ideation and uh, vision. And he also took pride in meeting with every single employee. And what happened is as soon as we got to around 400 people, it became, it became very challenging for him to constantly meet with people and give them all of his attention while running the company. And so he and I hit it off and it was very obvious that we see things and feel things in a very similar way. We both are extreme optimists when it comes to human beings uh, we both see yes, not no. And he found that familiarity in me and decided that I would be a wonderful uh, counterpart to what he was doing here when it came to people and culture. And thus, we created the chief heart officer role. And that's how it all came about. And so I scale Gary and we've created, you know, I have a team that then scales me and these culture champions that scale me. But everything really stemmed from the fact that he had been doing everything by himself. So I know that part of your growth um, involves uh, going overseas and opening offices in, in many different countries. Um, what were the challenges related to local cultures that you had to face in this process? Mm -hmm. It's a great question because, as you know, uh, living abroad, we cannot expect to come over to a foreign country and set up shop without recognizing other cultures and, recognize, and uh, holding space and, uh, and asking to be allowed into a space, if that makes sense. And so one of the things that we've really needed to do and understand is to hire locally. It's extremely important so that it's not the Vayner media of America coming over and you know, pushing things out of the way. It's being invited to the party with the other culture and then creating a dance together, if you will. And it's really, really important to respect other cultures, ways of doing things, uh, customs, language. These are very, very critical things to keep in mind. Other, uh, otherwise, you really have a very large chance of blowing it. So, for example, when we, uh, prior to, to actually setting up an office in London, we spent an entire year getting to know the UK, getting to know the customs of the London market, advertising market. We worked with many consultants to help us understand what it was we were walking into and also introduce us to key players there, people we should know, um, uh, whether or not it was real estate, whether or not it was legal, whether or not it was, uh, again, other advertising agencies. And it is truly important, again, to respect the invitation. I really, I need to say that, you know, to really respect who's inviting us, and to enter in with grace. Weiner Media has quite a unique culture. And of course, each company has a unique culture, unique to, to, to the company. Um, 
But at the same time, you still use a lot of very traditional HR processes and systems, such as performance management and, you know, performance-based pay, 360 reviews, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'm curious, uh, are you considering maybe dropping some of them or doing something innovative around those systems? Because as you know, of course, they have been challenged now for quite a while and people often say they don't really work and we should do something different, but no one has really come up with a great alternative. And I think if we can expect and hope that someone will come up with something interesting, it's companies like you. So I'm, I'm really keen to hear what's on your mind and how would you improve all these systems that um, you work with in the area of HR? Yeah. So I'm, I'm really glad you asked that question. Again, being that we were, were nine and a half years old, we didn't have an HR function until year five and a half. So what we did create was pretty much what we saw, uh, what we saw in the outside world. We will be getting rid of 360. We've gone, we've moved to uh, doing much more radical candor feedback here. Um, and we took a, you know, a page out of Kim Scott's book in order to do that. Uh, so we're doing many more frequent, um, frequent feedback sessions, and we've done a lot of training around that. I'm looking for an employee engagement uh, platform right now that'll allow that frequent feedback, the frequent reviews to happen with a quick a click of a key. And to keep that historical uh, context, because what many people will know if they work in advertising and, and maybe other uh, industries, I'm not sure, is that it's easy to switch managers if you switch teams. And what's very important is to create or maintain the, the context that the former manager had on this employee. Otherwise, that employee feels as though they don't have roots. You know, but well, Sally was telling me I needed to work on this and uh, she had me on this growth and development plan in order to get the promotion in April. But you, there's no record of that. So that's really essential for us to, um, to provide that I'm calling it employee engagement. It's really employee engagement and performance management system all in one. That's really what we're looking for here. Um, and that's, it's crucial for us as we scale. And it's something I want to do that's, um, you know, that'll, that'll propel us forward. It won't keep us stationary. This episode is brought to you by Time Etc., an award-winning virtual assistant company for entrepreneurs. I started using Time Etc. a couple of months after I established my own consulting business. I reached out to them because, like many entrepreneurs out there, I felt completely overwhelmed with work. I was putting in incredibly long hours, I wasn't sleeping enough, I was working on the weekends, and yet it seemed completely impossible to get it all done. It got to a point where I knew that something was going to give sooner or later, so I decided to get some help. Initially, I started working with one-time etc. assistant, and I quickly realized that it made a huge, huge difference. So many things were taken care of, from scheduling appointments to arranging travel, updating my website, formatting documents. It saved hours of time, time that I could spend serving my clients, recharging my batteries, and simply enjoying hanging out with my loved ones. As my business started growing, my team grew too. Now I have three assistants and honestly, I can't imagine my life without them. Time Etc. has a very strict selection process, so the assistants working for them are extremely experienced, capable and motivated. What I also love is the fact that Time Etc. creates the opportunity for really talented individuals to be location independent or to work from home. It's always been an important thing for me to work from wherever I want it. And I love the fact that my team has the same opportunity. If you are a freelancer 
or an entrepreneur like me and you feel like you could do with some extra help from a virtual assistant, Time Etc. has a very generous offer exclusively for the listeners of Culture Lab. You can try an assistant for two hours completely free of charge. To take advantage of this opportunity, go to www.timeetc.com slash culture lab. That's www.timeetc.com slash culture lab. Or you can just click on the link in the show notes. One interesting thing that you've said is that you are going to drop 360. Um, so what was the rationale for that? So what was the reason that you're dropping it? Well, it, it seems very antiquated. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, if <laughs> annual, re- the, the art of an annual review seems to have been lost because how can I review you on work that you did six months ago or eight months ago? Again, if I don't have the historical record, but also taking into account that you've changed, you've developed, you've devolved. So I, I, I think that the 360 uh, is a very subjective methodology. And if we can get it to a much more objective framework, then we would be in good shape there. But right now, a 360 annual review is very subjective. You like red, I like blue. I had a bad day. You remember Mm -hmm. that, you know, I mean, it's so important that the way we, as managers and leaders, the way we see people is really what they become. We're very, very powerful. And we need to have respect for that power, but we also need to have an enormous amount of empathy and generosity if we're going to have power like that because our opinions matter and people Mm -hmm. are looking at our opinions for inspiration. So we need to really take that into account. Yeah, absolutely. I recently interviewed Patty um, McCord for the podcast as well and she had an interesting view about 360 um, which was that she she decided at some point that it would be a good idea to ban it. They didn't uh, eventually but her rationale was that if they are one of their values was transparency. And I think Netflix indeed lives that value. And she challenged the, this whole idea of giving anonymous feedback to people uh, while you, at the same time, you try to encourage transparency and candor. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so um, th- the whole idea of giving feedback to people without telling them who you are and why you're saying that was a little bit in conflict for her with that value. And I can completely see where she was coming from. I agree. Um, And completely see where you are coming from with this as well. As you say, it's object, it's subjective. People just um, express their opinions. Um, So, so as far as that is concerned, so you said that you are looking at something that is going to give you a little bit more of a view of the pulse of, of engagement uh, in real time. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, what do you know already with what will you replace uh, the 360 um, to know what's going on and how people are performing or th- this hasn't been fleshed out yet? We haven't fleshed it out yet. We've been looking for the, I would say the past six months at different uh, pieces of software. And I imagine by, I'm going to say February, the latest, uh, we will have, we we will have settled on something. So, uh, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of great programs out there. I think that I'm stubborn and looking for the right, you know, the right one for this agency, um, for the future. So, yeah, I think I, I'm very hopeful that we'll find something. We'll find the right one. I'm sure you will. And I'm really curious to find out what, what okay. it will be. And <laughs> we'll definitely really con- reconnect to, to yes. find out what you're doing. So one more question that I have is um, going back to your culture, what it feels like to be working in Viner Media and um, what sort of culture you want to cultivate going forward. Um, Have there been any trade-offs that you had to make as far as your culture is concerned as you were growing rapidly? So 
kind of things that you said, do you know what, this, we cannot do this anymore. We're too big to do this. We'll drop it. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a a slightly different, a slightly different answer that I, that I think the question is looking for. We, because we're very friendly people and we were, we're very, you know, we're a newish company. The company was created by brothers who hired their friends and their friends are friends and friends are friends. We had a lot of similarity here for the first uh, handful of years, a lot of very same, same. We, the first thing I did when I got into this role was I changed the way we hire. We used to hire for culture fit, meaning you live in Italy. I love Italy. You like red wine. I love red wine. You're hired. (laughs) And we'll figure out the rest. But I like you. Now we're hiring for skill set fit and culture addition, which means I'm hiring you because I know you can do this job today, tomorrow, and the next day. You've shown me that. And you happen to have values in the same zip code as us. So you're not identical which allowed us to start uh, widening our net for diversity. And again, diversity of the obvious kind and diversity of thought for people that are curious, for people that would question why we do things the way we do things. So that's an enormous change we moved into three years ago and, uh, and one that I, I feel was a very necessary change. And I was, you know, we were all very happy to see us go in that direction. We just needed to, I don't know if we needed the tagline that I said, skill set fit culture edition, or we just needed, you know, Gary and I to stand up and say, this is what we were doing. Uh, but we did it. And, you know, it's something we can never not do. So you hire for skill set and you say it's basically being sure that the person can do the job today, but also tomorrow and the future. Um, and I'm wondering, are you looking for people who can do the job they want, or are you looking for people who will have a stretch in their role? So have a certain skill set foundation, but um, the job that you offer them is going to be a stretch for them so that they can grow into it. What is your philosophy around that? My philosophy is, is both twofold. So you know, as we know, when you're applying to a job, most of the time you're reaching a little further than you actually are. It's a little aspirational. It's a little bit of a reach. Otherwise, you're not going to grow. Especially um, if you are a guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think research says that men tend to apply for jobs, that they meet <laughs> only 60% of criteria, whereas women, if they don't meet 100, they will not yes. even apply. <laughs> it's just a fant- I've seen that too. It's, it's, yeah. um, you have to laugh. <laughs> uh, um, so we are definitely needing the skill sets done today, but all of the job descriptions are written for tomorrow as well, which gives us that wiggle room to grow. It gives us that wiggle room to be fluid and flexible and to change course when the time comes. And one of the things about VaynerMedia that I think really stands out in comparison to the other places I've worked is uh, our KPI being speed. We, we want to be extremely fast. And that means sometimes we can go out with something that's 80% correct. And then because it's digital, we are able to uh, course correct as we go because it's live. Why is speed so important for you? You know, I I believe that speed is so important because of the world that we live in now. So everything is at your fingertips. The world of advertising and marketing is changing uh, as fast as we can speak. New apps are coming out faster than they were two years ago. Uh, Gary is fast. And so the entrepreneurial world, you know, we, we, we are him. We are a manifestation of Gary. He is a disruptor. He is an entrepreneur. He's an incredible salesperson. And we want to keep up. We have to keep up with him because that's, that's the name of the game. That's the name on the door. So um, what has helped us with the speed is the longevity of employees, is the shorthand that teams create with one another. 
Uh, and that shorthand can only come from a team that is rooted in uh, connection and trust, uh, empathy, uh, autonomy, you know, things like that, which we know the workforce is needing and looking for today. So that's a, the skill set fit um, piece. Uh, I'm also curious about the culture addition piece, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, how methodical is it? So, for example, if you hire for a certain department, do you or the, the, the head of that department, do they ask themselves, you know, what, what are we missing in terms of mindsets and beliefs and attributes? And uh, are you looking for a person who's going to complete the team or how does that work? You know, a a lot of times it's dependent on the role. So if you're hiring an entry level role, most of the time we're looking for that task, those tasks to be done with with growth and a growth uh, and a growth plan for that role. When you're hiring for more director VP, obviously SVP, we're looking for people to come in and and bring their opinions and to do some shape shifting within the team or the department. And we're very direct about that. There are certain roles, I would say VP on up, that we will have Gary meet, that I will meet. Um, And that is really important because they get a sense of who we are. They get a sense of our vibe, if you will. They get a sense of where Gary's head is, um, so forth and so on. So Again, it really depends on the role, it, and it would also depend on the geographic um, uh, geographic location as well, because our offices are doing different things. Los Angeles does a lot of entertainment work. Chattanooga, Tennessee does a lot of small, medium business, and those, you know, right there, those uh, takes takes a different level of um, uh, creativity and curiosity. Being mindful of your time, and I think that we should probably be moving uh, towards the rapid fire questions. Okay. So I'm going to ask you five questions in rapid succession, and we'll aim to uh, get them answered in under two minutes. All right? Yes. Okay, so let's go for it. The first one is, how do you define organizational culture? Collaborative, a collaborative mindset, uh, a, a culture in which... Uh, it is uh, particularly flat. Uh, there is um, an understanding of entrepreneurship, un- uh, possibility, and um, teamwork. Mm-hmm. And what would you say are the signs that a company culture needs some work or perhaps even a major overhaul? Toxicity, fear, uh, a no culture, scarcity. Cynicism, gossip, uh, favoritism. I would look for any of those things Mm -hmm. in the hallways and you can feel it. And and I would suggest a major overhaul. Mm -hmm. Are there any companies that you admire for their culture? And if yes, then why? Um, I admire a company called Culture Amp. Mm -hmm. C-U-L-T-U-R-E-A-M-P out of California and Australia. I probably admire them if I really think about it because they go into companies and help create culture. So it's near and dear to my heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I, I like everyone I've met there. I, I appreciate and enjoy. Awesome. I've heard of them, but haven't met anyone yet. Um, and what books on culture or leadership would you recommend our listeners read? Um, so Patty McCord's Powerful. Yeah, I think there's awesome. great um, build it by, uh, Glenn Elliott and Deborah Corey out of London, I think Mm -hmm. is a really great book. Um, I love, I'm I'm very keen on daring greatly, Brene Brown and setting the table. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so what would be one thing that our listeners could do tomorrow to build their own culture lab and start cultivating a culture that will help them and their teams to bring their vision to life. They could listen to their employees, <laughs> figure yeah. out ways to really get to the heart of what matters to them, whether or not that is something like a, a survey, uh, anonymous feedback, um, uh, you know, a suggestion box, and quite frankly, just talking to them. 
asking them questions and listening. As simple as that. (laughs) Simple as that. So, um, in uh, wrapping up, uh, I'm wondering, are there any thoughts that you'd like to leave our listeners with? Um, any, any sort of last, last words? Uh, I, I feel, I feel as though inspiration is a very, very powerful tool and a powerful drug. Uh, and I mean that in the best sense of the word and one that we all have the ability to carry within us and do and give to others. So inspiration takes positivity. It takes creativity, curiosity, and it's something that everyone, everyone can provide to others and to a culture. So turn your inspiration light on. <laughs> so I, I, I know that you are really, really good at that because I've, I watch your videos and it's really is clear to me that they're done very spontaneously um, (laughs) on the spur of a moment very often and very inspirational so what what advice do you have to those of our listeners who don't seem to have that innate talent to just you know switch that light on what what should they do what how to go about this well everything takes a very healthy dose of courage, doesn't it? Uh, And for me to turn the camera on takes a healthy dose of courage and to point it at my face. So obviously if I can do it, anyone can do it. But what I would say, if if that is not comfortable, is plan out what you want to say. Maybe come up with three things that you want to talk about, three bullet points, and so you can stay on course if that's something that works for you. Uh, which is, you know, some people are structured like that. I'm not as structured like that. I really do go for it whenever the wind blows. Otherwise, I wouldn't. If I don't take that opportunity in that moment, I would, I would let that moment come and go. So um, structure yourself. If that's what works for you, give yourself a topic of the day or quite frankly, talk about something you're grateful for. Everyone mm-hmm. can do that. So one last thing that I want to ask you is, do you have any recommendations um, who I should have as the next guest on the podcast? I think you should have Whitney Johnson, who I've has... already had her. Oh, you have? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. She was great. She was amazing. Okay. Oh, terrific. I'm so, yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. Um, well, there's someone I'm really interested in. in uh, she's written the book, You Are a Badass. Oh. And her name that? is... Jen Cisnero, Uh S-I-N-C-E-R-O, I I believe. Mm -hmm. She has a very matter-of-fact way of going about personal change. Uh, So that might be someone that you're interested in. I don't know if you've spoken to uh, Glenn Elliott from uh, Reward Gateway. No, not yet. No. He's in London. I think he's fantastic. Do you, do you know him personally? I do. Yeah, he's a would good you, friend. Would you mind introducing us? Uh, uh, I'd love to. That I would absolutely amazing. love to. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so those those two people, and I'm yeah. thrilled that you've had Whitney Johnson. I need to go listen to that yeah. then because yeah, she's she was so great. Yeah, good she's friend. Fantastic. Uh, she, and yeah, and a great book. Um, Build an A team. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. So, so one last thing uh, for those of our listeners who'd like to be able to follow your work and um, get to know you a little bit better and uh, Viner Media as well. What is the best place uh, for them to go to? Uh, please go to LinkedIn or Instagram. Uh, it's just Claude Silver mm-hmm. and Viner Media, our website, uh, V-A-Y-N-E-R-M-E-D-I-A. Uh, I get back to anyone that writes me and I would love to be in really? touch. Yeah, anyone and everyone. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you might get some more emails after, <laughs> after this interview. Terrific. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really, really enjoyed our conversation and I'm sure that our listeners will love it too. And I hope to have you back uh, sometime soon, especially after you redesign your um, your systems and uh, start using the new um, the new software. Uh, it you. will be really interesting to see how that's been working for you and uh, what, what you've learned in the process. 
I would love to do that. Thank you. And next time uh, I'll meet you in Italy. We'll do it there. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> Consider it an open invitation. Fantastic. We're waiting here for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claude. Thank you, Claude Silver, for being our guest. And thank you for listening. Thank you, our sound producer, James Ede of Be Heard, our production manager, Lindsay Nunez, our content editor, Rachel Nice, and art director, Emily Spencer. And before we say our goodbyes, I want to give you a quick preview of my next interview with Sopip Im and Jeremy Hockenstein from the Digital Divide Data, or DDD. People at DDD believe that talent has no boundaries and opportunities shouldn't either. In 2001, a group of friends, among them Jeremy, traveled to Cambodia. And what they noticed is that there were a lot of young people with great potential and that they couldn't find a decent job in Cambodia. And so they decided to bring tech skills and living wage to men and women in underserved communities in Asia. It was there that DDD helped plant the seed for a socially responsible outsourcing practice that is now known as impact sourcing. Here is a short preview of our conversation. Yeah, in terms of culture, I mean, I, I think what we're saying through opportunity is that, I mean, since the, you know, since purpose is at the heart of this, you know, at, at the, the core of what we're trying to do. And as you say, there's a balance of business and others we can get into. Um, at the core of this, it's really about, you know, making a difference, you know, and, and being a stepping stone for people, giving them opportunity that really, you know, infuses, you know, everything we do. And I, I think that's quite powerful. Our culture is about giving chance, giving opportunity for people who, who need and want to be different. Thank you for listening to this episode of Culture Lamp. If you found any moments that were interesting, inspiring, or maybe even game-changing, please share it with someone who'd appreciate it. After all, good ideas are meant to be shared. <laughs>